Hey everybody, it's Dr. Carmen Bryan and this is Car Chronicles. How you guys doing? You doing all right? Happy Friday to you guys. I don't know when you're going to get the video, but today is Friday. Happy Friday to you all. I hope you guys get some rest this weekend. But let's do this. You ready? All right, let's do this. So you guys know I have a conference coming up on July 27th in Atlanta, Georgia at the Marriott Marquis on Peachtree in the middle, smack dab in the middle of Atlanta. And I'm hoping to see you all there. Um, there will be general session VIP and online. You can do Zoom online. The fees are very nominal. I promised you guys last time I wouldn't go up on the prices. I will leave the prices as they were. And then my program that I'm in actually increased the prices. So I went back and changed it um, to, um, you know, to hold true to my word. And so please go to overcomingnarcissistabuse.ticketleap.com so you can order a ticket or email me at drcarmenbryant at outlook.com if you need an invoice. But all monies will be due next month. Please don't wait till the last minute because we don't want you not to have a spot and we want you to be there. Um, but in this year's um, conference, my fourth annual conference, we're talking about breaking generational um, trauma, breaking generational cycles. In order to break a generational cycle, you have to recognize the cycle. And some of you are coming from families. I've been doing videos as a prelude to the conference. And, you know, some of you have been very faithful and followed me for for a few years now. And I can't recall, some of you guys were telling me like when I started, I can't even recall when I started, I gotta go back and look. You know, I was kinda, I was kinda boring in the very beginning until I picked up on my own personality. I was like, well, just let me be myself. But I think it's like 2018, something like that. But, um, and, and a lot of you have been learning and a lot of you, you know, it's like you had that aha moment, that fog lifted, you had that aha moment and you had that epiphany where you started looking at your own family. You love your family. You know, it also depends on the type of generations you come from. And I'm going to talk about that at the conference. That you're starting to look at your own family and you're starting to pick up. And the sad part about it is, is not only were you picking up, you're starting to recognize traits in your own families and your family of origin, you know, or adoptive family, you know, but you start to pick up on traits. And so you started to notice the traits in your families and it got to a point where you were able to pick out the narcissist in your immediate family. And it's painful because some of the brothers and sisters or mother and fathers, you know, brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers, aunties, whatever, you actually were enjoying being around because they were funny, you know, funny and fun to be around. But then you started noticing, you know, that they're very critical and like the jokes that they have you know, are always like undercurrent aimed at someone, you know, 90% of a joke is truth. Uh, you started noticing that, you know, there's a lot of competition in your family. You know, you got people that are competing with each other within the family, siblings competing with you or a sibling, you know, siblings competing to be number one in the family. You know, you have people that are pulling family in so that you remember in the narcissist family cycle, you know, that narcissist is the son and you know the big yellow one is the son, like Brian Regan would say, uh, you know, but that narcissist becomes the son and they want everybody to rotate around them. You have some that are very obvious in their behavior. They're more overt on the lower end. And you know, all the traits that you have learned, they're very obvious. So they're a walking DSM-5. You know, they're a walking manual. And everything that you hear on the videos is very obvious. Some of them are not very obvious because of the fact you have the altruistic, um, the altruistic narcissists. Those are the ones that are the heroes. They go and fix the, they almost can pass as an empath and they're not. You know, they have empathic traits, but they're not empaths. They're narcissists and they're altruistic. Those are the ones that, you know, are going to fight for the right of their family members or other people. Those are the ones that are going to show up and, and, and take care of family. And, you know, but you notice that they have that little control. You know, if you say the wrong thing because they want the attention, they want to be the important people. They want to be the one that everyone comes to for advice. They're like the Yodas, you know, in Star Wars. Go look up Yoda. They're the Yodas of the family. They want everybody to come. And they're like the godfathers or the godmothers of the family. They want everyone to come to them so that they can be blessed. You know, but, you know, kiss the ring, kiss the ring. You know, they're the ones, they're the, you know, the, the popes of the family. They're the ones that, you know, it's a comp competition. They need the attention. They need people to find them important. They want to be important. They want to be relevant. And they even have, you know, they will try to eliminate their competition by smear campaigning. 
they smear campaign they're the ones that will talk about you you know or talk about family members but they do it in a concerning way they can pick out everybody else's faults and they can tell you about how and a lot of it may have some truth to it they can pick out the faults of everyone and give them advice but yet their life is falling apart but they try to hide it you know they try to keep those secrets because they don't want to see they don't want everyone to see their imperfections and how they themselves are a problem they can pick out everybody else's faults but they can't see their own they don't like leadership they don't like to be told what to do they don't like to be corrected they can give advice and correct everybody but they don't like to be corrected they don't want anyone pointing the fingers at them because if they point if you point fingers at them they will make sure that they tear down your reputation they tear they talk about you before other people even meet you they talk they because they like they they see the type of personality that you have you're a fun loving individual you're a great person or whatever but they take your past and hold your past against you whatever it was in the past that you had going on they hold your past and they present you to people by your past they always they t they project themselves onto you and they present their projected self on you to other people before people have an opportunity to make uh, you know judgment on you and and the sad part about it is that some of you guys are experiencing it and it's your own family it is your own family then you always got the one narcissist that is the vulnerable the victim always the victim always playing sick they don't ever want to get better they don't ever want to resolve issues they don't always want to solve problems they always have to have a problem because if they have a problem people are always trying to help them solve the problem but if you notice no matter how much you give them a resolution to the problem they never want to resolve the problem because if you resolve the problem then there's nothing for me to talk about then I, there's no problem and you're not going to give me the attention they will purposely do things or be sick or not do something or not eat or not bathe or cut their nose off of their face despite the fact that they have a big hole in their face to force you to take care of them to force you to pay attention to them they will not eat or drink for days so they can end up in the hospital so that you can interrupt your day to go and tend to them they don't have the way that they sabotage your families because of the fact that they know that you're sensitive to them and you're afraid for their well-being so they take advantage of your of your kindness and they do things to purposely disrupt your family you know you got husbands or wives that are complaining about the fact that you have a mother or father or a sister or a brother or whatever that constantly pulls on your attention as if you're married to them some of you actually feel like my husband is married to his his mom my, my wife is married to her mom or dad you know and it's like I can't have any time with my husband or wife because the mother or the father is pulling on them you know and it makes it seem like you're running a whole nother household because they refuse to let you go and no matter how much you try to come and resolve the issue they get angry with you because you've given them a resolution you've given them a, 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 a solution to to a problem they, they won't do anything until you arrive. And if you don't arrive, they'll talk about you to everyone. They'll smear your name to everyone about how much you don't care and you're careless and you're leaving me here and I'm an old woman or an old man and you won't even help. And people feel sorry for the narcissist because they're always a victim. They're always a victim. They're not going to get any better. You know, those are those vulnerable victim mentality narcissists that never get any better no matter what and you're driving you it is like they're driving you crazy you're running yourself in a circle trying to figure out how to help them and no matter how much you try to help them they always get worse because you know they're for them their safety and my sickness and if you applaud them about something you know they have to turn around and be sick again like oh no 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 that means that that I'm independent and I'm not independent you know this is what some of you guys are going through and this is how they maintain power and control but some of you have finally come to terms with the fact that oh my god my family is toxic this is some of the things these are some of the things that we're going to be talking about at this conference because these are some of the families that you come from so please go register for my conference you can do general session VIP or you can do it on zoom overcoming narcissist abuse dot ticket dot com or email me dr carmen bryant at outlook dot com and i'll send you an invoice i want to see you there you got to be there we got to heal